Yo. 19 and 68 Ford Galaxy 500 428. You got some fancy new rims and tires for this and you wanted to get an alignment and uh, the little birdies at the, the Tires Plus mechanic place told him, ah, oh, it needs all the bushings and all the ball joints and he believed it. So that's what I'm going to do. I told him to get his own parts and thankfully he got all moog. He didn't get any energy suspension polyurethane stuff, which is great because I, I don't like any of that. The biggest reason why is because polyurethane, it's as hard as a freaking rock and it doesn't last that long and it's actually cheaper than rubber. Um, because polyurethane doesn't have to go through the vulcanizing process to make rubber. So these are way better bushings in my opinion. I don't like using polyurethane in anything. There's factory bushings in this thing and it's 60 years old, so... These will last at least 20. I had to go to O'Reilly's too and get some sway bar links because he didn't get any of those and I'm pretty sure I'm going to need those because he's actually got a sway bar in this old dog. He's got the bolt-in ball joints. Here's all the part numbers. Hopefully he got it right. Apparently some of these ball joints are pressed in. These are not. I'm going to start by taking off his fancy tire. There's a little bit of play this way. So he's got a little wheel bearing movement in here. I'm going to tighten this wheel bearing up a little bit. But other than that, it feels really, really tight. I'm going to start off by taking off the tire. Personally, I would have spent the big bucks and got some Krager SS's for this car. But that's just me. Ooh. Front disc brakes. Fancy. You must feel like stopping. Fancy. Take this cotter pin out. The one that's actually uh, too small for this. Just turn this nut just a little bit. Trying to find us try to find a spot that lines up. I'll put the right size cotter pin in the thing. Now I need to load this lower control arm. So I'm just gonna put a jack under it for now. I'm gonna do the upper control arm first. I have a castle nut for this upper ball joint. I'm going to take a cotter pin off of it. I like to use a side cutters for these. <laughs> that castle nut's loose. It's moving. Danger! Danger, Will Robinson! Look at that. This nut's not even tight. Usually you need a ball joint separator to pull this out, but it's been loose for a million years probably. I hope this steering knuckle's okay. Probably gonna need a pickle fork or something to separate this ball joint or smack it with a hammer or something. Yeah, that ball joint's still good. Since it was loose, I'm gonna wanna take a good look at this socket and make sure it's not oblong. It looks like it's still round. So it should be fine. I'm going to be brave and I'm going to let this down and just to see what happens. Spring's still tight. Somebody was nice enough to take the starter wire and run it through the control arm. What kind of level of genius is that? I'm going to have to unbolt this and pull it through. This is a half inch or a 13 millimeter for all of you metric guys. I'm not going to disconnect the battery either. This is not a hot This is not a hot wire. Unless I touch it on a positive. 
Well, that was fancy. Should I do that again? I don't think so. It almost wanted to start for me. Okay, they probably did that to keep it from melting on the manifold. I'm not putting it back. It's not going under there again. I'll reroute it later. Now I gotta remove these two bolts for the upper control arm. There's slotted holes for these bolts. I can feel this one for sure. And that's for camber caster adjustment angles. So I gotta make sure I put this in exactly the same spot as I took it out. And that's not gonna work because everything's too filthy. I got a shorter pick here. I'm just gonna try to do a better job of scribing this. That's what I'm after right there. I lifted up the control arm quite a bit so I can get at these two bolts. Um, there should be square nuts underneath here in the frame. And these are 13 sixteenths. For all you metric guys, that's almost a 20, 21 millimeter, not quite. I'm just gonna take these out. The nuts should fall out on the bottom. Yep. Yeah, I got some square nuts down here. Then this control arm can come right off the side. I'm gonna try to turn this just so I can get this in a vise. I should get it to turn enough. Uh. That way I can get some good leverage on it. I'm going to put some paint just on one side. I just marked the control arm and the bar on one side just to make sure I get it in the same way. I don't want to turn it around. These nuts right here are a 15 16th or a 24 millimeter for all you metric guys. I don't want to just run these out though because sometimes these threads pull out with these. Because a lot of these upper control arms on a lot of these old vehicles, this bar, it's not hardened steel. It's a really soft steel. So it's not a good idea to just try to take this nut off unless you have replacement bars to deal with. So what I'm going to do, I got some map gas here. And I'm just going to guess and get this nut up to about 500 degrees. Because if I get this nut up to about 500 degrees, it's going to expand it just enough. And all of the rust and junk that's inside the threads from the last 50 years is just going to turn into a fine hot powder. A lot of it will just burn off and smoke off. And then this, this nut will come right out without wrecking everything, I hope. I can see the rubber on the inside, it just started to melt and pop on me. Saved. I'm going to cut this rubber out. So these are splined. So they're really not supposed to turn and I, I want to leave these nuts loose until I get everything in the car and the suspension loaded and then I'll tighten these nuts down. I used to take these bushings out the hard way for the last gazillion years but they actually have a press for this. So this was at Advanced Auto Parts. There's the part number 648604. Power built. Um, there's a few different. OTC makes a set like this. There's probably some cheap Chinese set out there too. This is a rental and I actually bought it. They made me pay full price for it because it never got used. Oops, upside down. 
and most of these do never get used, so it didn't surprise me at all. And I think I'm just going to buy it outright. They made me pay a full price for it because it was brand new and it's a rental. And I can go back and get my money back after I'm done with it. But I think I'm going to keep this set because um, I've remembered a, once or twice a few times I've wanted to have an opened end press. So I'm going to try to use this instead of... Um, a lot of times you got to burn out the rubber or just get an air hammer in here and try to just air hammer the things out. I usually just air hammered them, but I don't think I'm going to have to do that now. So I guess I'm going to do a review on a 648604. Um, I don't think there's any videos out there on this particular tool. There's some destructions here. You can get in here and... I don't know, they try to tell you something. First thing I'm going to do, since I'm going to call this my own, you don't ever want to leave these screws dry. And um, you don't want to get any dirt or sand in the threads either. A lot of people use grease. I have ARP assembly lubricant from some stuff that I've worked on before. And this is the best stuff to use for these threads. This stuff is the cat's meow. Looks like the screw end is a uh, 22 millimeter or uh, 7 eighths for all you metric guys. Oh wow, look, they already got some junk in there. Well, they were thinking. Got a little cap here that goes on this end. There's an O-ring in there to hold it in. Doesn't look like it works very good. Oh yeah, I got it. They give you extra O-rings too. I'm gonna run this in a few times, run it in and out just to get this stuff in the threads really good. That should be good for a very long time. Looks like this fancy cup goes on this end. Fits in there really nice. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's fancy. And then uh, I got these for getting this bushing to drive through. There's three different sizes. I just want to find the one with the right diameter. Looks like it's this one right here. Yeah, I think so. I stick this on here. Oops. Put the cup on the thing and the thing. I'm going to put a little penetrant on this bushing just because I can. Probably isn't going to matter much. You know what? I think I'm going to put the biggest adapter on here just to get it started just to make sure I don't spread that open I just want to get the bushing to move I'm just going to ever so carefully try to drive this thing through oh yeah try the smaller one now This thing should come right out. Oops. Not if I go the wrong way. There it is. I haven't had to do one of these upper control arm bushings in about 20 years, and I tell you what, that was pretty easy. I can get this out of the way now and do the other one. This one I can get out with just a regular ball joint press if I really wanted to. Well, that's a slick little tool. That's definitely a keeper. I'm not returning that one. I'm keeping it. That's definitely a good little bushing.
Looks like these 8083s are what's going to be going in here. Um, there's the installation tool. They have different collars for different size bushings, but I'm not going to need it. That's the right size right there. Um, generally, you want to put these in dry. That goes around the bushing hole, which is great. Slam this in here. Slam this in here. Just kind of getting that started a little bit. I'm going to run it in. You don't want to force it too much. Just run it in until it stops. Make sure I got my white mark on the right side. washer action, little nut action, and threads look beautiful. I'm just going to leave these nuts loose until I get this thing in there. I'm going to do the ball joint next. This is a 9 16 14 millimeter for all you metric guys. This is actually the factory ball joint, so these other two holes are rivets. And uh, there's two ways to get these out. You can air hammer them or chisel them. I'm going to grind them out. Nice. I'm probably supposed to drill these rivets out, but whatever. These were really in there. Looking like that's the upper ball joint. Looks like I got to use this factory nut because um, the other side's got a bump stop that's under it. It's bolting it down. Looks like this grease circ is a 10 millimeter. No standard equivalent for you standard guys. Probably already pre-greased, but I'm going to grease it up anyways. Just going to pump it up until I see grease coming through the thing. Like so. Didn't take much. I got a rubber boot that I can just slop on here. This poor slob's ready to go back in the car. I think that's about right where it was. Now I can go ahead and lo load this suspension back up. Line this ball joint back up. Looking like this is a 7 ace. 22 millimeter for all you metric guys out there. Turn this wheel, make sure it is good and tight. Torque this to, I don't know what, a lot. Got a cotter pin for this thing. Now that I got this suspension loaded as high as it can go, I can tighten these nuts back down.
I'm onto this lower control arm next. I put a strap around the coil spring. Just went from the frame. Put one wrap around the coil and back up on the frame somewhere. That's going to keep the coil spring from dropping out so I don't have to hold it up there when I go and put this thing back in. Sway bar length a half inch or a 13 millimeter. I'll try a pair of vice grips. One is not doing it for me. Just gonna get a pry bar and force this sway bar link up just to get get it out of the hole. I'm gonna unbook this shock next, half inches on this. I'm gonna unbolt this bar next. I think they call this a lateral link. These are three quarter inch. Um, that'd be a 19 millimeter. Now's a good time for me to load up this control arm. I should be able to pull the shock down loose and just turn it. I'm just gonna push this up through the hole. That gas shock doesn't have a charge anymore. It's not gas anymore. Gonna get this ball joint off next. This is a 15 16 wrench. That'd be like a 24 millimeter. I just want this jack just a little bit loose. I could use a pickle fork, and if I do that, it's gonna wreck this boot. Maybe I'll try to beat on it a couple of times and see if it wants to pop. Holy did it ever pop. That was like spook. Move the whole car. All right, I'm just gonna let it down nice and easy. Uh-oh, my screw's all the way down. Be brave, do something stupid. Okay. There's a three-quarter bolt and nut on this control arm. I am victorious. If I can just find a socket and put it in between here, it won't bend this one in this way. That should work just fine. Just like before, I'm going to cut this rubber off. Now that I got that rubber cut off, I got a socket here that looks like it's just the perfect size. It's just a hair smaller than this bushing. Doesn't look like I need any tooling for the other side. I should be able to just drive this thing out of here. Got a new bushing here, K8082. I got this ring here, there's a B on it. I think that'll fit in here just perfect. And this cup goes over that. I'm going to drive this in nice and easy and make sure nothing bends.
That's it. Bushings in. Nice tool. These lower ball joints seem to be quite gravy. They're just bolted in. I'm going to pretend that I'm smart. I don't want to tighten this bolt until the suspension's loaded either. Um, what do I do? What do I do? I got a screw jag dilemma. What do I do? No problem. I got both sides done. I put it on the ground and the front end was about three inches too high and I I jounced it and it was super bouncy. So I had to drop it all the way on the ground and while it was on the ground I had to loosen up all of the bushings and I jounced the front end really good and I tightened up all the bushings again and everything fell down and now it's right. So it's a job. Okay, bye.